The movie I'm going to talk about today is a very strange, nonsensical one that most people probably haven't heard of. So it's pretty amazing that I still managed to get a sponsor for this video. Thank you, Surfshark. That's right, Surfshark VPN, a virtual private network that protects your data using military-grade encryption, keeping all your info safe and helping make sure your private info stays private. And knowing the kinds of people that are watching a channel like this one, you should really make sure nobody else sees what you're doing online. Having a VPN can really come in handy if you're traveling. Depending on where you are, you might not be able to access certain sites, but with Surfshark, you can change your IP address at the push of a button. It's also great for getting access to content that might be blocked in your country. For example, I'm Canadian and here we don't have Hulu, but using Surfshark, all I have to do is change my location to the United States, and like that, I've got Hulu. And if anyone's worried that using a VPN might be expensive, I got you covered because I have a promo code. Just click the link in the description below or use the promo code TENOLD to get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Alright, now let's start the show. Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Stuart Wilkie, who asked me to review Robo Vampire. Now, the title might lead you to believe this is about a robot vampire, but it's actually a Robocop ripoff featuring hopping vampires. And that's right, it's one of those movies that is somehow even weirder than the title would indicate. Robo Vampire is definitely not a movie that the average person would have heard of, but recently it's got a bit of a reputation on the internet as an infamously bad movie. Sure, it's not quite as popular as stuff like Troll 2 or The Room, but I'd say it's about on the same level as stuff like Who Killed Captain Alex and Things. What the fuck are you talking about? Several other people have already done videos on it, and it even got the full riff tracks treatment. Camo versus denim, like a fight broke out in a Bass Pro Shop. Alright, so I'm a little late to the Robo Vampire party here, but for anybody who hasn't heard of it, just what the hell is this movie? Robo Vampire comes to us courtesy of infamous Hong Kong exploitation filmmaker Godfrey Ho, a guy whose whole shtick mainly consisted of taking footage from one movie, then adding a bit of his own footage and repackaging it as an entirely new movie. Usually this many would just add ninjas to another movie because, hey, who doesn't like ninjas? But this movie came out in 1988 and Robocop was a big hit the year before, so how about just make it a Robocop knockoff? Fuck it, might as well add some vampires while you're at it, cause why not? What I'm trying to say is imagine if somebody took one of the Turkish knockoffs I've done on this show and spliced it together with one of the Korean knockoffs I've done, and that should start to give you an idea of what this movie's like. Brought to you by Filmark International, a subsidiary of Totally Legit Enterprises. Yeah, I believe that about as much as I believe this was directed by somebody named Joe Livingstone. Actually, believe it or not, according to some sources, the movie was really directed by Godfrey Ho's associate Thomas Tang, who's listed as a producer here. But, honestly, does it even matter who directed it? I mean... It's not like the movie's gonna make any sense. Case in point, remember how Robocop began in fucking Nom? Come on, is this supposed to be a ripoff of Robocop or missing an action? Ah! Okay, they just killed an animal, so I guess it's an Italian exploitation movie now. I joke, but when we see some of the vampires here, they look like they just stepped out of a Lucio Fulci zombie flick. By the way, you can really tell these are vampires by the way they hop around in broad daylight and kill people by gently massaging their necks. <laughs> Oh, okay, never mind. I guess they do bite people. Hmm, not bad. A little too much ketchup, though. So there's our intro to Robo Vampire, starring whatever white guys Godfrey Ho could find willing to work for five bucks a day, and I'm guessing a bit of whatever's in that bag right there. Even though this is dubbed into English, the plot's still kind of hard to follow. For example, I'm not sure if these soldiers are after drug dealers, or they just want to murder this guy for wearing that denim vest. Oh, fuck. Yeah, how do you think I felt when I got requested this movie? Ah, a guy in a suit wearing sunglasses at night. That must mean he's the hero. Listen, we must find a way to handle Tom, that goddamn anti-drug agent. 
Ooh, and he comes with exposition dubbing, too. No wonder these guys need to deal with anti-drug agents. It looks like they're trying to hotbox that whole building. So anyway, how do you plan on handling them? I've employed a Dallas. He'll train vampires to deal with him. Or you could just try bribing him. That'd probably be a lot easier. Okay, so as far as I can figure, the plot has something to do with criminals trying to smuggle heroin, and they're using Chinese vampires to help them do it. Uh, you know, just like in RoboCop. Wow, these vampires are so new they still have tags on them. Also, a movie like this wouldn't be complete without a little goofy humor. Who the hell is this bumbling idiot? <laughs> Ken, what the hell are you doing here? Ken, huh? Well, I guess that's close enough to Kenny. Excellent. We'll smuggle the heroin in the vampire's coffins. This is even better than when we roll giant mummy joints. Unfortunately, the vampires don't appreciate anyone else in this movie trying to be goofier than them. Did somebody say slapstick? <laughs> All right, look, fellas, I know you wanted to use the vampires to deal with anti-drug agents, but I don't think the cops are going to be scared by monsters playing hopscotch. Now, if anyone's baffled by the hopping vampires, that is actually a thing in Chinese folklore, but there's certain things that don't really translate well between cultures, and I think hopping vampires are one of them. Combined with the outstretched sleepwalking arms, it looks like they're having night terrors about playing a Mario game. <laughs> Also, they're the only vampires you can defeat by sticking a Chinese restaurant menu on their face. Uh, thanks for your help. Let me take a look at those drugs. Yeah, why do I get the feeling that was said a lot making this movie? This is rice powder, that's why they woke up. Hey man, you ever try freebasing that shit? You'd be hopping like crazy too. I don't know if using vampires was the best decision for your drug business. We're changing our cover from the drug smuggling business. To what? Uh, it's like variation, you know, on the body smuggling business. Well, okay, but it's gonna be a lot harder to hide a body inside a condom and smuggle it up your ass. Actually, what they meant was smuggling the heroin inside the bodies of animals, and they show this on screen by cutting open a real cow. However, because I don't want this video to get flagged, I won't be showing that. Hey, you know what this movie could really use? More goofy monster shit. And we get just that when a weird flying ghost lady suddenly comes into the movie. How could that be a lady ghost? How dare you enter here, you witch! Which is it, a ghost or a witch? I guess it could be both. So if anyone's wondering what the hell is going on, Keep wondering. How dare you take my lover's corpse towers and turn him into a vampire beast. Peter and I would be together forever in the afterlife. You have robbed us of this by turning him into a vampire beast. Ah, uh, huh? I think Ghost Lady here is less upset about you turning her boyfriend into a vampire and more that you glued that stupid Halloween mask to his face. Peter, I'll still love you forever! Look, you're both undead. Can't you make this work somehow? Jeez, I always wondered what a kung fu fight scene would look like if it were choreographed by Mo Howard. She's your enemy! Alice, that lady ghost loves him deeply. Yeah, love is love, even between... these... things. All right. But from now on, you must both obey me. Looks like the anti-drug agents have got the work cut out for them. Cole and Young have adopted some tricky methods again. More cunning. Luckily, we've got our agents Sophie and Brown watching them very closely. Good to know. Who are you? Well, now that you know where the drug smugglers are, time to arrest them. <laughs> Or just shoot him. That works too. Unfortunately for the drug agents, the Taoist wizard unleashes the vampires. And as we previously established, these guys are daywalkers. Or day hoppers, I guess. I'm still not sure why this one's wearing a mask. Maybe he's also a were ape. And in addition to drugs, he's also smuggling illegal fireworks up his sleeve. Now at this point, a lot of you are probably asking, why the hell is this called a Robocop ripoff? Well, here's where it starts being more like Robocop. Kind of. Turns out this guy is our Alex Murphy for the movie, and after he gets Roman candled to death by Vampy Kong, his associates decide to bring him back as a cyborg. Since Tom's dead, I want to make use of his body to create an android-like robot, Mr. Glenn. Or... android. Whatever, close enough. Are you assured of success? Mm-hmm. All right, your application's approved. Wow, no paperwork or anything? That was easy. We can rebuild him. Make him stronger. Faster. Better. Uh, 
Well, okay, maybe not better than he was before, but we can bring him back. So instead of RoboCop, we get Robo Warrior, aka a guy in spray painted hockey equipment. Oh, and here's a fun fact you know what Godfrey Ho said when he saw that costume in a spirit Halloween? I'd buy that for a dollar. And then he did. Here's another bit of trivia according to IMDb, this movie had a budget of. what? Two and a half million dollars? Uh, yeah, sure, IMDB. And this video of me talking about it cost ten million. With Robo Warrior online, all criminals better watch out. Now you should inform Mr. Young that, in my opinion, all anti drug agents should be terminated. No, 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 no. We're doing a Robocop ripoff. If you want to terminate a ripoff, go to Indonesia. Oh, wait. I guess we still got to do this drug smuggling plot line. Father, where are the drugs? You ask about drugs? I know nothing about drugs. Oh yeah? Well you agreed to be in Robo Vampire, so I think you do. In situations like these, it's important to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And the answer is hide a bunch of heroin inside a cross. Uh, that's not mine. Uh, I was just holding it for one of my parishioners, I swear. <laughs> Boy, this movie really plays fast and loose as far as introducing new characters. Even when this chick jumps out a window, she turns into a different person. Turns out she's an undercover drug agent who gets captured by the bad guys. You're nothing but scum. You kill Father Brown and your drug kill millions! You were the one with the priest hiding heroin inside a cross. Also, why is she acting like she's in a shampoo commercial? Are you high right now, lady? There's only one person who can help her now, and that's Robo Warrior. Ray, we need your help to rescue this woman. Oh. Okay, I guess Ray's gonna do it. Who the hell is Ray? So remember earlier when I said Godfrey Ho specially was taking footage from one movie and combining it with stuff he shot to make another movie? Well, this whole part with Ray trying to rescue the girl from the drug dealers was taken from a 1984 Thai movie called Paul Logan. And if you're wondering how it syncs up with the Robocop vampire part of the movie, it doesn't really. But hey, they had to get this movie to 90 minutes somehow. If she talks, then all of us are washed up. Yeah, I'd say your career was washed up the second you agreed to be in this. Meanwhile, in the other movie, looks like people are busy packing drugs in the Phantom Zone. Dead or alive, this movie's not gonna make any fucking sense. <laughs> see? Told ya. Ah, uh, yeah, this is exactly the cinematic battle I wanted to see. Kung Fu Kong versus Robo Crap. While we're at it, I feel bad for the actor that had to wear this costume. Must have been hot as balls wearing that in the middle of the jungle. Uh-oh, looks like the drug dealers are subjecting the captured agent to the dreaded Chinese low-flow showerhead torture. Hey, this is only the beginning. It gets much worse than this. Soon you'll beg us to finish you off. Unless you want to give us the information right now. No dice, pal. She's not going to tell you anything. Mainly because nobody knows what the fuck is going on in this movie. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Hey, looks like Bill's over there. Yeah, you're right. Having a bit of an arm wrestling contest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Okay, so I guess they're looking for some guy with a tattoo on his hand now? Come on, guys, we just got started with the whole Robocop thing. Can't you just stick with that? Or just start shooting, whatever. I guess exploitation movie Bruno Kirby here knows where the captured agent is. Just who the hell is this guy? If you go and kill him now, we're never gonna find out whereabouts they're holding Sophie prisoner. Who are you? I'm Wendy. And his younger sister. Damn it, movie, quit introducing new characters. I still don't care about the old ones. Oh, good, Robo Warrior's back. And yes, I did just say I was glad to see this thrift store cyborg. And easy with the fire, fellas. That spray paint they used is really flammable. We get another fight scene with the vampires, but this time they've learned some new moves besides just hopping. Somersault, cartwheel, dog pile, kip up, ring around the rosy. What is Robo Warrior gonna do? <laughs> Your move, creep. Damn, if vampires couldn't stop him, what are the drug dealers gonna do? Ah! 
Just kidding, Robo Warrior ain't dead. Instead, they just rebuild him again. I'm afraid he's short circuited. Are you sure that's what happened, Doc? Phew, good thing they stopped by Party City and picked up enough sparklers to fix him up. There you go, good as new. Which wasn't that great in the first place. Meanwhile, in the other movie that's in this movie, oh, looks like these are some seriously bad dudes. They're drinking beer and hoarding toilet paper. Whatever, fight scene time. Now, if any of you are wondering who's the good guys and who's the bad guys in this scene, good question, I have no idea. Hey, you two okay? Yeah, I think so. Also, who are we again? Bad news, fellas. By the looks of it, they've decided to turn this into a cannibal holocaust ripoff. Which, considering the animal death, they were kind of already doing. Anyway, at wherever this is, the characters go and do... something... I don't know what the fuck's going on. What are you gonna do with the kid? He could be working for Young. Wasn't there, like, a ghost lady and a gorilla vampire in this movie who wanted to get married or something? Is that even still a thing? Young doesn't give a damn about human life. Yeah, well, the director doesn't give a damn about plot cohesion, so there. Uh, what's that, audience? You're getting a little bored? Well, here, have a skinny dipping scene. All right! <laughs> it's a great view. You should bathe more often. I'm saying that because you smell bad, sweetheart. So I guess the movie's a Blue Lagoon knockoff now. Man, they are really padding the runtime, aren't they? Well, maybe now that we're back to Ghost Lady and Not So Mighty Peking Man, things will start making more sense. <laughs> Monster foreplay is really weird. Dead or alive, I'm gonna get more screen time in this movie. And come on, don't interrupt their monster sex. You're supposed to be Robocop, not Robocock Block. Don't kill us, we love each other. Aren't you both technically already dead? You can kill us, but wait till our love's consummated. Okay, I'll stand here and watch. Oh, and by consummate their love, they mean have a flashback to more stuff I don't care about. Bet you knew I was a cop when we got married. I didn't know what was involved at first, but that'd be so dangerous. I've worked this job for years, and I'm still alive. Yeah, babe, it's not like I'm gonna get killed and become a shitty Robocop knockoff or something. Well, that was disappointing. Guess I'll just go jerk off in the bathroom or something. Ah, uh, but hang on a second, Robo Warrior. First you need to have a fight scene with these two. You're gonna have to deal with Ghost Lady's toilet paper rolls of doom and Vampire Gorilla's weird Bruce Lee screams. <laughs> I have no idea what any of this has to do with the drug dealer part of the movie, but hey, at least they're focusing on the Robocop vampire part of this movie called Robo Vampire. Fire! Oh no, not these assholes again. Go away, will ya? You're extending the movie unnecessarily, and I have no idea who most of you are. Alright, as much as I'm complaining, this part does have one pretty decent stunt in it. Okay, that looked really fucking dangerous. <laughs> Let me tell you that nobody ever escapes from me. Whoever the hell I am. These two get captured and taken to where the blonde lady was. Uh, is she even still in this movie? Or the other movie? Whichever movie this is? I don't know when I don't care. Hey, are you one of the good guys? Wait, are we the good guys? Who are we? So our, I guess, heroes advance on the, I guess, drug dealers, but they're not without some casualties. Why we stop? Let's keep moving. No, no come on. Come on. Oh no, not that guy. Ted's gone. Yeah, Ted. 
They got Ted. I can't believe they killed Ted. Every time one of the drug dealers dies, they just lose a dummy. Actually, considering what the rest of the movie's been like, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually shot people here just to save money. Oh hey, blonde girl's still alive. Somehow. I mean, it looks like she's been indulging in some of the drugs she's supposed to be stopping, but she's alive. Hey, we rescued you. Uh, is that what we were supposed to be doing? Whatever, just blow this place up. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've wrapped up the drug dealer part of the movie, sorta, time to end the robo-vampire part. Maybe. Dead or alive, I'm still in this movie, bitch. I'm not sure what the vampire's weaknesses in this movie are, but I do know the fireworks really confuse Robo Warrior. He had no idea it was 4th of July. In any case, his prime directives are serve the public trust, protect the innocent, and kick vampire ass. <laughs> All right, there's only 10 minutes left, so I'm assuming it's all gonna be fight scenes. So what do you say we find somewhere quiet to be alone then? Don't blow me away by saying you don't love me anymore. And you are? Hey, get the hell out of our movie. We've only got a few minutes left. Hmm, let's see. Plot resolution's got to be around here somewhere. Normally I'd say hopping isn't an effective mode of transportation, but in this case, Robo Warrior's so slow we might not catch up with him. You know, as ridiculous as pretty much everything in this movie is, I think the one thing that baffles me the most is they have white castles in Asia? And we've only got a couple minutes left, so might as well see if we can throw in a fight scene between these two and fit some last minute tits into the movie. Oh, and don't get your hopes up for any sort of resolution that makes sense here. Here. Robo Warrior uses a flamethrower he's never used before to light up a pinata of Gorilla Vampire, and then the movie just kind of stops going because it's finally reached 90 minutes. All right, you know what? I think I know a way to end this. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. All right, it's not perfect, but. It's better than nothing. Okay, if you made it this far into the video, you know that Robo Vampire is not a particularly well-made movie or even that coherent, so judging it objectively is pretty much pointless. The only question worth asking here is, does it work as a so bad it's good movie? And much like the actual plot, it kind of seems like a good bad movie spliced in with a bad bad movie. There's definitely parts that are amusing for how batshit and nonsensical they are, but even at just 90 minutes, the movie feels a lot longer than it actually is, with the Thai drug dealer parts in particular really dragging the movie down. For a movie called Robo Vampire, I really would have preferred if they stuck with the whole Robocop hopping vampire part of the story. I mean, come on, you're already making a Robocop knockoff and adding Gorilla Vampire vampires and ghost witches. We don't need this other crap spliced in there. Believe it or not, Robo Vampire was apparently successful enough that Godfrey Ho made a sequel called Robo Vampire 2 Devil's Dynamite, which is actually just a repackaged version of a movie Ho made before Robo Vampire. And this just makes me wonder, is there a Robo Vampire 3? Would that have Robo Warrior put on a jetpack for some fucking reason? Well, I guess that's a story for another video. That's all for now. Until next time. Bless, uh, bless our drugs. <laughs>